Welcome to the channel, all you gamers, nerds, and fireborn. Enshrouded is one of my favorite new co-op survival craft games. After hours of playtime, I wanted to share a list of tips for beginners to help set you up for success. First, your character is not locked to one server like Pal World. It plays much more like Valheim. When you log off your character, it takes its inventory with it and can join any other server keeping obtained skills and items. The strength of your flame altar is server specific. So keep that in mind as you play with friends. You could spoil some things for lower level friends joining your server. Since the flame altar is one of the first quests you will encounter, let's talk about its uses. It's more than just a space to build and store items. You can easily respect your skills as well as increase your base size and shroud protection level, which grants you more time in the shroud, as well as access to harder shroud areas that will change from deadly red shroud to regular traversable shroud areas. To upgrade the base, you'll need a few resources found in different areas, notably found nearby your current quest areas, including flame sparks, found in flame sanctums and mini boss heads. Increasing the strength of your flame is one of your top priorities as it provides benefits to all players on the server and story progression as some areas are locked behind deadly shroud. Let's go over a couple of quick tips for inside your base. My first hot tip is to never not have a rested bonus. The bonus time is linked to the comfort of your base. This is calculated one per comfort type of decoration. Don't worry, you don't have to set everything up all pretty like if you don't want to. Literally just stack them one on top of the other. Each type of comfort decoration in a corner will still increase your time. I'll go into travel tips later in the video. Craft lock picks at the blacksmith for one half the cost of production. If you use manual production, it's two lock picks through the blacksmith. It is only one. There's no shame in making a plethora of cheap small storage chests until you get the better ones. To try to keep things organized, when in a chest, there are shortcuts at the bottom of your screen that many players overlook. Hotkeys for organizing your inventory. The chest inventory, and most importantly, depositing and refilling stacks. Depositing stacks will put any item in your inventory that is not on your hotbar into the chest if it has the same item type already inside. To keep things organized, put one of each new type of item in a different chest, like food or mining resources. When you come back from your exploration, you can quickly dump your newly collected resources by opening a chest and hitting Shift R. This will dump all of the corresponding materials into that chest. I highly recommend stopping at the well in Longkeep, west of your starter beast, each time you visit in the early game, especially if you're consuming the water, as you will want a lot of available space once you get the farmer. Anything outside your base perimeter will respawn every 30 minutes as long as a player is not in that area for the duration as of the latest update. Before we talk about the shroud, we need to talk about food. It is essential for a successful session, whether you are going out to murder hobo baddies or a simple resource run. Do not sleep on just how useful the water from the well and honey from bees nests that are nearby your starter base are. Stamina regen saves lives, people. I recommend taking some time to kill the wolves at their den location nearby, as it is a very useful con and HP food for the early game. Cooking various foods at your campfire inc increases the strength and duration of said food. Make sure to keep these useful items on your hotbar. Please take note. When you die in Entrouded, you only lose certain resources and your lockpicks. You will keep all of your weapons and utility items, such as potions, scrolls, and food. So don't worry about having to keep a reserve stash of all of these things in your base in case of Sudoku. 
And as you progress, you will, of course, have access to better food and farming. So you don't have to keep running back to the old areas once you get a seed stock going with the farmer. For the most part. Before we get into the rest of this video, as per obligatory YouTube shilling, if you found this video so far or in the future useful or hated, please leave a comment, a thumbs up or subscribe. I am not currently a full-time YouTuber and a lot of time goes into trying to organize and edit these videos. I know I'm probably weeks behind the early access guys and daily gamers. I'm doing the best I can with my piss poor video editing and sarcastic as hell commentary. Besides the 90 some hours it took me to come up with these ideas. I have plenty more ideas for mid game tips and especially base building that will hopefully be completed soon. Thanks for any support or internet hate. Got to love engagement. Am I right? Now back to my dribble. As this game is called in Shroud, the Shroud is a huge part of the game. This beautifully lit, foggy, spooky place screams, embrace the suck. It's dark and hard to see far, all while being gorgeous to stare into for a period so long, a timer at the top of your screen expires and it literally kills you. It's worth noting, sometimes at night from high vantage points, the shroud can all look red, which is deadly, but it can actually be safe. -ish. This seems to be just a height and distance perspective, especially at sunset. If you aren't sure if the new shroud area you want to visit is deadly, don't just dive headfirst into it, forehead. You'll probably die. Just get close, like the edge, and take a few steps in. Check your timer at the top of the screen. If it doesn't say deadly with a fast timer, you're safe. Ish. If it does, back out quickly. But what do I do if I'm running out of time in the shroud? That's an easy answer. Panic. Run as fast as you can in a random direction and hope for the best. Or you have a few additional options. You could find a red hourglass time extension or exit the shroud. And this doesn't mean you have to find the edge of the shroud. Think vertically. There are numerous tall structures you can climb to pop your head out for a breath of fresh air or find a flame shrine. There is always a flame shrine near the elixir wells. Killing any shroud route will also clear a small area of shroud allowing for fast travel or timer reset. Once you find your reprieve, you can dive back in or fast travel back to your base. There are numerous resources you need from the shroud, shroud wood and liquid specifically in the early game. Shroud wood is self-explanatory, but the liquid might not jump out at you right away. It can be found in the mushrooms, <laughs> not those mushrooms. You can hack up the bigger ones with a felling ax, or just harvest the small ones. I find spamming harvest and running through the smaller Russian mushrooms to be a faster method of collection early on. Once you get your bearings, complete your first elixir well, and kill your first mini baddie, who's right outside of it, guarding it, and chop down your root. You need the head to upgrade the flame to the second level, maybe? I don't know. And each route you chomp down for the first time grants you an extra skill point to help boost your progression in addition to the leveling. As you explore new areas, you will find lore pages. These can reveal nearby locations containing shroud roots, but more on that later. Your journal or quest log is extremely useful, showing the main story progression quests in yellow. Craftsman quests are blue. These are used to upgrade your crafting tiers and also send you to useful locations to find resources. Gray quests are found from lore pages and have the mini quests. There are many times appear near your current location. You can complete them for a quick XP, usually 75 to 100. Weapons, gold chests, or resources related to the level of the area. And for all of you exotic base builders, new blueprint blocks can be found in some of these quests. These will upgrade the glorious builds I know you are all spending hours on. If you are not a builder, have no fear. I have an easy tip for your base later on. As you explore new areas, you gain XP for locating these new areas, as well as the glowing red lore pages. Your first goal after getting the blacksmith should be to climb the fast travel spire. 
As only a few of these are spread about the map, I highly recommend to unlock them whenever you encounter one. As you solve the platform puzzle, break all of these pots Zelda style. Many have useful and sometimes rare resources hidden within. Once you have the fast travel spire, you will be gliding a lot. Another hot tip is using right click whenever you're about to land to cancel a glide. As long as you are not very far off the ground, you will land instead of roll and not take damage. This helps you to not roll into the inevitable pack of wolves that's in the clearing you thought was safe landing. As you further explore the starting area, you should make a stop at the Flint Mine, just east of Brilliant Bridge, and the Wolves Den, just north off the trail nearby the Hunter location. Some animal dens are made of a twig-like terrain, and you guessed it, mining it is the fastest way to gather twigs for all of you rangers out there. If you are in need of metal scraps, you can easily find them in the Rookmore Camp, which can be reached easily by heading west under the Braylon Bridge in the Shroud or flying down from the Springlands Ancient Spire. If you are looking for resin, simply cut down the cut down brown trees with red leaves. Good God, I'm reading the teleprompter like Ron Burgundy. As you venture further, I highly recommend specking into the double jump. It's not many skill points. It increases your stamina on the way and makes exploring so much easier, especially the platforming spire puzzles to make traversing the map so much easier. Also, carry an extra flame altar or five stone to make one and an extra pickaxe if you have the resources. You can pop down a temp altar for fast travel and as you can destroy anything in the game, you can even cut notches out of a cliff to scale a mountain. Take note of the different things you see and encounter. Certain enemy types drop different resources. Plants and even the terrain types change as you explore, and you will need these new resources all throughout your progression. As a rule of thumb, if you notice a new plant, grab it. A new enemy type, kill it. Even the trees and terrain type provide different resources. Many of the craftsman quests will guide you to the area you need to find the resources for your next upgrades. So please explore them. Make use of your map markers. Find a system that works for you. I found marking easy entrances to the shroud, especially at lower levels, to be extremely useful. I personally used the white flag. I use this to mark the way in, the way out, and high points. So even as you come upon the tall towers for air, that way, if you are low on time, you don't need to just run like a chicken with your head cut off. Simply head back to your closest marker. This is going to be especially useful in the mid game as there are a few vast shroud areas. Some of them traverse under mountains. So if you hit a dead end, you can just run back to said marker. Staying on the road in the shroud, especially in a larger area, is also advantageous as it often leads to your natural exit or point of interest. These can all have a tall structure, shroud, or flame shrine. So as you advance your flame altar, you will have more bases than you know what to do with. You can either use additional ones for instant fast travel to resources, uh, or you can use them to drop one temporarily to head back to your base just to dump your inventory and go back to where you were exploring. So feel free to strategically drop them, take over existing villages, Harvest Homesteads is a great example of this early game. Dropping a second altar before you even upgrade it inside the building closest to the farming plots instantly, instantly gives you a base with a level 16 comfort. You don't have to do anything. You can either use this as a strategic placement so that you can try to accommodate the existing fertilized soil just to the outside of the building for faster planting, or you can expand your base later. But you can use this trick in many farm towns or even a few taverns. There's some taverns that have a 27 or a 30 natural comfort just for dropping a flame altar inside. Sure, there might be a collapsed roof or a wall to repair if you choose to, but I mean, who doesn't sleep like sleeping with free AC? 
there are fully functional existing buildings. Just keep in mind that any resources planted or chest inside of the flame altar barrier will not respawn. So you just want to make sure that you are not eliminating something that you were hoping was going to come back every 30 minutes every time you come back to your base. But once you get the farmer, many of these seeds and plants won't be as necessary as you can just grow them in the um, seed farm. So now it's the time where we need to talk about the elephant in the room farming routes. A simple search of Enshrouded will reveal numerous ultimate best fastest quintessential legendary farming location videos. Again, as of the latest update, an area will respawn resources if the area is left alone for 30 minutes. These legendary farms are a simple process. Find a gold chest, build a flame altar so that the perimeter of said altar is outside of the chest, grab the chest, log out and repeat as you spawn back in at the latest base. This is useful. If you only want to waste an hour trying to get a legendary weapon, you will quickly outlevel. You definitely can do it. I personally wasted a few hours with this farming method mid game with a chest just outside the Imperial Gardens, only to realize how much time I was wasting not enjoying the game. And all for just a few yellow pieces of gear that I quickly replaced by a, a higher level of rare gear that dropped for me not too much longer after just playing the game. Enshrouded is not procedurally generated, so there are resources, chests, and hidden lore all over the place. As you can upgrade each piece of gear three to five levels depending on the rarity, a fully upgraded legendary weapon goes from 10 to 15. A rare or epic piece of gear at level 15 will quickly outpace that legendary gear you spent 30 to 60 minutes farming at level 10. So sure, at the end game, there are pieces that would be nice, but I currently still use many epic and rare pieces of gear that I've upgraded to level 25 or were at level 25 when I got them. So each to their own. Runes can be acquired by salvaging the unused gear you find in the wild or from spam farming. These are what you use to enhance those gear through the blacksmith, through the multiple levels. And that being said, I have found a couple of tips to make any kind of farming more fruitful. If you need a bunch of salt, amber, copper, or the tin, which they finally reduced the quantity needed per craft up. I respec my skills and grab the harvesting perks. As well, I carry more than one pickaxe or axe. When I set up my base, I have multiple spelters or charcoal kins or any of the time gated craft benches that you encounter, seed beds, looms and the like. This allows you to make more per trip and turn them into useful items faster. There are some places you can accomplish more than one goal. For instance, find a spot with a gold chest or encrusted gold chest with resources nearby like hardwood, shroudwood, uh, chamomile, indigo, flax, uh, palmwood, anything. Set up your base so that it is just outside of the gold chest, but in a route that takes you through some of these items. Spawn at your base and run towards the chest. Collect, I don't know, a few mushrooms, chop down a tree for hardwood, collect a couple flowers, couple, a couple of flax, get your chest, log out, log back in, repeat. At least, when you're done with your 30 minute farming thing. If you haven't found a legendary spamming the gold chest, you have other resources to make healing potions or advance your base with. That's all I have for now. If you haven't liked the video, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Help me out so I make more content. Content, shit. No, I said it right. If you hated the video, piss off. Until next time, it's me, some random guy on the internet telling you how to enjoy a game you may or not be deciding to buy or enjoy.